You don't have to pay for these costumes in Mortal Kombat 1. Today, I'll show you how to get all of them for free, along with a few other secrets in the game that not enough people are talking about. If you love Mortal Kombat or simply enjoy fighting game guides like this one, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss any future videos. And then after watching, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like down below, it really does help my channel out a ton, and without any further ado, let's get started. First up, we have the Dragon Crystals. If you want a DLC skin or a really cool palette in Mortal Kombat, one, and sometimes even a rare gear piece, Netherrealm's gonna ask you to fork up the Dragon Crystals. You need this currency specifically. And the same is also true for certain announcers in the game as well. And unfortunately, most Mortal Kombat 1 players think the only way to get Dragon Crystals is to spend real world money. And honestly, I can't blame them, because the only reason I know that's not the case is because a lot of my friends are Mortal Kombat players, and they just told me of other methods. Believe it or not, you can get about 5,300 Dragon Crystals in Mortal Kombat 1 without ever having to spend a dime. Instead, it's only going to cost your time. Let's begin with the easiest example, completing story mode. Pretty much everybody by now has done this, and if you have in fact completed story mode, you get 500 Dragon Crystals for free, which might be enough to buy some of the things that you want in Mortal Kombat 1 without having to spend any real-world money. However, there's one more very important method to get Dragon Crystals in Mortal Kombat 1, and that's leveling up your character. And you can do this in a variety of ways, whether it's playing online, in combat league, or grinding in invasion mode, there's a bunch of ways to level up your character. And once that character reaches level 20, you get 100 dragon crystals. And then, if you can reach level 30, you get 100 extra dragon crystals on top of that. Or in other words, every base character in Mortal Kombat 1 can get you 200 dragon crystals. However, unfortunately, I think the DLC characters can only get you 100 because for some reason they can't reach level 30. It's just impossible. Which is a bit of a bummer, but but even so, if we do some quick math, that means Mortal Kombat 1 with all the characters and story mode gives you about 5,300 dragon crystals. Which on the one hand is great news because it means you can get several DLC costumes for free. But real quick, a fair warning. Be careful which costumes you pick because you're likely not going to be able to buy every single one that you want with the in-game dragon crystals. However, that being said, the good news is that every time a DLC character shows up, you get more free dragon crystals as long as you reach level level 20 with that character. So once again, the good news is, if you want a very particular costume in the game but don't want to spend real world money on it, you don't have to. Because there's in-game ways to unlock more dragon crystals without having to spend real world money. Now of course the downside is, grinding for this currency is going to be a bit of a hassle and likely take a lot of time, even if you do research the fastest way to rank up your characters, which I recommend you do, there's several helpful guides on YouTube that show you exactly how to level up your character as fast as possible. But even with those specific methods, it's not going to be quick. It's still going to take you hours to reach max level with the character. So at the end of the day, it just comes down to how much your time is worth. Would you rather spend hours unlocking dragon crystals or spend six to ten dollars on a single costume? The choice is yours, and neither situation is fantastic. However, do keep in mind, for some perspective, a lot of modern games aren't even giving you this option. You have to spend real world money, and that's the only option. Like Street Fighter 6, for example. There is no way way to grind in that game and get those costume 3 skins for free. You gotta spend real world money. There is no way to get the Ninja Turtle skins for free by playing the game. You must spend real world money. And like I've said in past videos, it's not just fighting games. Most modern games are doing this now and making you spend real money to get the DLC you want. So even though I understand it's not ideal to grind for hours to get free Dragon Crystals, at least keep in mind Mortal Kombat 1 does give you an alternative to get these costumes with without having to spend real world money. But next up, let's talk about Fatal Blows, because believe it or not, a mechanic from MK11 still exists in Mortal Kombat 1, but the game does not tell you, and as a result, many players are not aware of this. Just like in Mortal Kombat 11, if I press a button right when my character hits the opponent, I can actually get increased damage on that hit, and I chose Scorpion and Sub-Zero because they have rapid hitting attacks in their Fatal Blow, which allows me to really maximize the damage here. Look at this. 
Normally a fatal blow only does 35%, but here we're getting 39%. And keep in mind, I was just mashing. If I actually memorized the timing, you would get even more damage, maybe almost 40%, but mashing can actually get the job done just fine. It works way better than you would think it does. However, here comes the craziest part. On paper, certain characters and certain cameo fighters have more hits in their fatal blow animations than others. And since every single hit can give you more damage if you press the button at the correct time, that means some fatal blows can do more max damage than other fatal blows, at least in theory. I don't think anybody has actually tested this yet to confirm, but it makes sense to me, right? If some characters have more hits, that means in theory they should get more damage if you time all your button presses correctly. And even if that doesn't turn out to be the case, at the very least, if certain characters have a bunch of hits rapidly in their fatal blow, that means you can mash and have an easier time with the timing, and therefore it's easier to get higher damage in your fatal blow. But next up, I'm gonna test something that I'm actually not sure about yet. I'm going to take control of Reptile and have this fatal blow done on me, and then I'm gonna be the one mashing and see if I can reduce the damage. Because don't forget, this gameplay mechanic was copied over from Mortal Kombat 11, and in that game, as the opponent, if you timed the button presses correctly, you could actually reduce the damage on every single hit. So alright, here we go, moment of truth, I'm gonna have Sub-Zero do fatal blow on me, and now I'm going to try and time my button presses. Eh. 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 Uh, mash, 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 mash. Uh, mash, 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 mash. I think it's working. I think it's actually working. Yeah, look at that. I reduced the damage by almost 5%. So it's not just an offense thing. It's a defense thing too. Don't hit me again, Sub-Zero, please. Have mercy. Yeah, that's so cool. So this mechanic still exists from Mortal Kombat 11, but the confusing part is Mortal Kombat 1 doesn't have a visual indicator, which Mortal Kombat 11 did. As the person doing the fatal blow, every time you timed the button press correctly, you'd see a skull appear on screen, which told you you got increased damage for that hit. And then on the flip side, as the opponent, if you timed your button press correctly, you'd see a shield icon appear. And that was how you knew that that hit did reduced damage. And this could be the difference between life and death, victory or death defeat. And as a result, it's really important to know about this mechanic. As Sub-Zero, I was getting almost 5% more damage, and then as Reptile, I was saving 5% of my health. It may not seem like a big deal, but honestly, it could be the difference between victory and defeat. Alright, next up, let's talk punishing fatal blows. In Mortal Kombat 1, fatal blows have odd block stun and sometimes a lot of pushback, and in Ashura's case, look at all the range on this fatal blow. Crazy, right? If she does this fatal blow at max range, it can be very hard to punish unless you just go for a raw special move. And that's an issue because for some characters, their specials don't actually extend combos, so they gotta dash in and try to punish, and as you can see, due to all the pushback and the weird block stun, it can be difficult or at least awkward to punish fatal blows in this game. And that's definitely done on purpose, it's not a Mortal Kombat thing specifically. Tekken 8 is also doing this where, yeah, the supers are punishable, but they're purposely harder to punish than before. However, did you know that Mortal Kombat 1 has an awesome loophole to make fatal blows a lot easier to punish. Check out Ashra's Fatal Blow detail in particular. The game says that it hits overhead. Guess what? We got up block, baby. And even if you block after the Fatal Blow startup, you can still do the up block. Check it out. And look at that. No pushback at all. In fact, Ashra actually sucked me in. That's not gonna happen all the time. That could just be an animation thing, but look at this. I'm right in her face. And as a result, the punish is gonna be super easy. Check this out. Oh yeah, and now let me flex real quick. Let me flex. I love Melina. I love this combo. Let me flex. Oh yeah, this character's dead and then some. Like, she's she's beyond dead. She's not coming back from that. Almost 50% damage, baby. And that's only possible because there was no pushback thanks to up block. And this works for any overhead in the game, not just fatal blows. Up block removes all pushback from the attack. And then on top of that, it makes most overheads completely punishable. But I think all of you watching already knew that. I just wanted to reiterate in case you didn't. And also, in case you don't know, there's a lot of overhead fatal blows in this game. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on screen. Every character highlighted in red has an overhead fatal blow that can be punished with this method. With the only exception being Lee Mei, which is so annoying because yes, it hits overhead, but there's a second impact that hits mid and that undoes the flawless block and still pushes you back, which is so annoying. I love Lee Mei, don't get me wrong, super fun to play, but why does she have this shield? The move hits overhead, let me punish it with an up block. But I digress, you get the idea. Up block can punish a bunch of fatal blows in this game, so go into 
practice mode and try it out. And there you have it everyone, a few more secrets in Mortal Kombat 1 that you may not have known about. If you learned anything new in this video, please leave a like down below and also subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And also, before you leave, please tell me any other secrets you know about this game in the comments section. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.